Hello everyone. I would like you to listen to what Bianca uh, Ojuku have to say about the question which she was asked on why, you know, former governors get so much resentment after they leave office. And the person asking the question was saying, especially in the Southeast. I think this is across board uh, all, all over the, the, the country. Every region we say, especially, you know, their own region. And the answer she gave, oh my goodness, is just mind-blowing and apt and just describes the situation she just nailed it and said it as it is without trying to be politically correct or mincing words or not just saying things the way they are i was just listening to her and taking notes 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 i had listened to her here all this one all filled up taking on like wow just look just watch You've talked about the challenges pertaining to the trickle-down effects of most government programs into the communities or the grassroots. Last question, please. Why do most governors, especially here in the Southeast, encounter a lot of antagonism and vilification once they leave office? Uh, would you prefer a diplomatic answer to, to this question or a straightforward one? Uh, as honest as can be. So, uh, except for those of them who have actively created a legacy of empowerment or have deliberately set in motion a process of sound leadership succession uh, across the political and administrative uh, arena, the raw truth is that um, the average Nigerian governor uh, in the course of an eight-year tenure, or perhaps four, as the case may be, it generates enough megawatts of resentment to power a nuclear megastation. Why do I say this? Uh, they often forget one thing, which is uh, that uh, legacy is not measured by uh, how many kilometers of road or how much infrastructure uh, you have built, but how you made the people who chose you to govern them feel. Um, apart from the usual litany of sins, uh, such as uncompleted projects, um, unfulfilled promises, uh, partiality towards their own particular zone and their tendency to um, import conflict into communities, um, what is even more telling is uh, their poor ability to manage and to sustain human relationships whilst uh, in office. Um, first, they jettison lifelong friends, uh, their acolytes, even the foot soldiers who contributed in funds, in sweat, uh, in tears and blood to their electoral success, whilst, on the other hand, going out of their way um, to cultivate uh, sworn enemies. In short, they have a flawed reward system. Uh, moreover, uh, the, the speed at which they become uh, addicted to the power at their disposal wielding it like a lethal weapon um, and intent on playing God in the lives of the electorate who gave them that power is incredulous. This is when all the manias come into play from megalomania, egomania, pseudomania, squandermania, even dipsomania. The list is endless. The irony of it all begins to unravel once they move first from uh, the engine room of power, which is the governor's office, uh, to the corridors of power, which is just as uh, they are about to leave office, and then to the wide open field when they become ex-governors. That's when the cold wind blows. Uh, that's when they look back in search of their old friends, those they avoided, denied access, and uh, disappointed whilst in office. 
uh, that's when they begin to suffer the withdrawal symptoms that come um, with power evaporation. Uh, that's when they fully comprehend uh, the, the term cold turkey and that this does not necessarily refer to a large bird that is frozen um, and that even rats will desert a sinking ship. All that money uh, they might have amassed in the course of their political service can never insulate them from the animosity, the bitterness, the enmity and the bad blood they accumulated whilst in office and the inevitable state of loneliness and isolation that comes with it. And this, sadly, they often realize too little too late. Wow, wow, wow. Wisdom packed into, I mean, I could just listen to her on and on and on again. You know, she just packed in a lot of things into that whole conversation. And, and truly, most times, you know, just a few days ago, I was just having this discussion with my husband where I was like saying, look, people just seem to think that just building roads is what governance is all about. I said, that's the least of governance. I mean, anybody can do that. You're not a contractor. You just give out the country. Just do the right thing. The reason why that even to an extent is being praised is because of the fact that you find out that a lot of people who have been in that position, they, they eat the money, they don't do the work they're supposed to do. But growing the people, you know, you're talking about human development uh, index. These are very critical things where, you know, people are empowered. People's lives are made to be better. Policies are made that will make uh, people's lives better, that will put more money in the hands of the people, where there will be increased, you know, income, uh, personal income, and, and, and all of that. There are so many things where the lives of the people would be, would be better. And so, so many things that one needs to do to actually be able to get to that place where you're giving, you know, good governance. But unfortunately, what we have, uh, we have people who just don't care who don't know uh that i'd like to say legacy is not measured by how many kilometers of road you've done and all of that but in terms of that they don't create a legacy of empowerment they don't give sound they don't uh, also uh, have sound leadership succession plans uh the average nigerian governor generates enough megawatts of res resentment uh to power because of the way that they behave they became they become dictators you know that i want to say absolute power corrupts absolutely you actually see it playing out in nigerian politicians who are able to get into office especially those ones who are uh, governors, the way they behave, the arrogance. And they seem to think that these eight years, it's like 80 years to them until when they are about to go out, like she said, when they leave the NG room and come into the corridor of power before they go to the white place, before they leave, finally, you know, uh, leave that office, they begin to realize that they actually ended up wasting their eight years, creating a enmity instead of, you know, instead of more bonds, instead of friendship. And you find that even their old time friends, they sort of like discard them. And it's at the end they are looking for who is going to be uh, with them. These are people who actually do play God. And she talked about all of those mania that come with megalomania, pseudomania. She mentioned quite a number of those uh, mania where people now begin to think that they are more than what they actually are. Uh, actually, uh, I, I, let me just stop here. I mean, if you need to, please just just listen to her again. I've listened and listened. I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so amazing because she really. And I hope there are either governors or those who want to be governors uh, in future actually listening to what you say and try to avoid those pit. You know those pitfalls. Power is very intoxicating, and the way you have in Nigeria, where they worship power, they, I've seen during campaign the way, especially these politicians, they go out, oh, the psycho fancy. You understand? Oh, your excellency, your excellency. Almost people as if they can't breathe where the people are. If you're not very careful, it will get to your head, and you begin to think you're something when you're really nothing. And so the most important thing, and for me, I always say to people. Don't think about who, who is praising you today. Think about the 100 years after you leave office. Will they praise you? That's what should matter to you. That's the work you should be putting in. Not those psychophants that are telling you, Excellency, Excellency, 
that you are the best thing after jollof rice when you definitely are not.